Hey guys, so we pick up with the McIvy family in A Land Remembered um, after they had left the scrub. So they were in the scrub for about a long time when they got to Florida and now um, Tobias was just, he had had it with all the um, getting, getting uh, called to go herd cattle and chop wood and then the guys coming and burning down his homestead made him decide that he wanted to take his family somewhere where they couldn't be found. So uh, we, we catch up with them in 1866. They are on, it's called the Kissimmee River. The runty black cow snorted and tossed its head from side to side as if it was daring the horse and the rider to come after it. Tobias eyed it cautiously, trying to maneuver the horse from one side to the other. Then the cow snorted again, wheeled, darted off into the thick strand of trees, its wide horns making clanking sounds as they struck vines. Tobias kicked the horse into full pursuit. He dodged low-hanging limbs and then felt his body crash into the side of a tree, crushing him, causing him to depart the saddle, flip over backwards, and then hit the ground with a thud. Hey, you! He shouted as the horse disappeared into the brush. Zach was off to one side watching. He ran to his father and said, He done it again, didn't he, Papa? That army horse don't know how to do nothing but run a straight line. Oh, remember he got that horse from uh, one of the soldiers, and so army horses, are, they just know how to run straight in a straight line. Tobias said, getting up and brushing the dirt from his overalls, he ain't worth a spit in this swamp. We're never going to catch them cows until we get us a horse that knows how to run around trees instead of into them. Even a mule would know better than that. I'll go get him, Papa. You wait here. He's just over yonder. Tobias hobbled over to the tree and he sat down, and in a few minutes, Zek returned with the horse. He said, we going to try some more, Papa? There's two more cows in the brush. I seen them. Now nah, we best go back. I got chores to do at the house. Can I ride the horse now? You can have the blasted critter, Zek. Just make sure he don't walk head onto a tree and knock your brains out. I feel like my tail is broke. Zek scrambled onto the saddle and they went along the path that wound beneath the huge oaks. Soon they came to a small plot of ground that was fenced with split cypress rails. Inside the pen, there was one cow with the letters MCI burned into its side. Tobias looked at the cow and said, He ain't much, but it's a start. We ought to have a dozen cows by now. I guess we'll have to try again tomorrow. Maybe we ought to build us a trap, Zek said, bouncing up and down in the saddle as if the horse were in a full gallop. He could catch, you know, we could catch him like you catch, uh, well, like you trap raccoons. That'd have to be some trap. A wild cow ain't a coon, and you know that. What we need is a horse with some sense and some dogs. So it sounds like they've actually started to try to get cows. Um, and so they have one, and it has MCI, which I'm assuming is McIvy, MCI burned into its side. The small cabin was in a clearing on the west bank of the Kissimmee River. It was built of cypress logs fastened together with pegs and the roof was palmetto fronds. It contained two rooms, one a kitchen and eating area and the other a sleeping room. Tobias and Emma occupied the small private room and Zek slept on a pallet in the kitchen. It took Tobias six months to find this place. They followed the west bank of the St. Johns River, stopping for days at a time to let the tired horse rest and gather strength, taking what food they could from the woods and the water. Nights were spent beneath the thin protection of bushy cabbage palm tops or the outspread limbs of water oaks. When they finally reached the source of the St. John's in a lake that seemed to mesh into an impenetrable swamp, they camped there for a month, fishing with crude hooks that Tobias made from thorn bushes and killing raccoons and rabbits with the whip. Then they turned inland and wandered again, finally coming to a dense hammock along the bank of the Kissimmee. Tobias knew at once that this isolated place was where he wanted to be. It was what he had been looking for. There were no other homesteads nearby, and the nearest trading post was at Fort Caprone, 50 miles to the east. Since arriving in the hammock, Tobias had been to the trading post only one time, and it was then that he learned that the war was finally over and that the South had lost. He had gone down there to buy salt, and he also paid a blacksmith $2.14 of the $14 that he earned on the cattle drive to make a branding iron. His pen stood empty for almost a year after that. There was nothing to brand and he practiced the letters, he practiced burning the letters MCI into every log on the side of the house. And then one day he caught the lone cow. After herding it into the pen, he held it on the ground while Zek pressed the hot iron into its side. Tobias then stood for an hour just looking at the burned MCI that pro proclaimed the cow to be his own. While scouting the countryside, he came upon an abandoned village where Seminoles once lived. The chickies were rotten, that's the type of homes that they lived in called chickies, were rotten and had fallen into decayed heaps, but there were also the remains of a garden that still contained corn, squash, beans, and pumpkins, and a small plot of sugar cane. Well, that would be useful. 
From this, he started his own garden and he hoped that it would thrive in the black river bottom soil. His next project was to build a small barn for the horse and add several rails to the cow pen fence. These woods were too filled with predators. Each night, he tied the horse to a post just outside the cabin door. It was no good for chasing cows in the swamps, but it was his only means of pulling the wagon to the trading post or anywhere else. Spring had just passed into early summer, and the woods were alive with the sounds of chattering birds and rambling animals. Squirrels barked and great blue herons squawked loudly as they glided along the nearby river. A red fox flinched its bushy tail and ran across the path as Tobias and Zek entered the clearing. Zek stayed on his horse, racing it back and forth between the cabin and the edge of the woods. Emma was at the table in the kitchen area, chopping coon meat into small pieces and putting them into a frying pan. When Tobias entered, she put down the knife and said, do you know when you might make another trip to that trading post? I guess I ought to go pretty soon. I got a whole passel of coon skins. Maybe they've got some flour. A batch of biscuits sure would be good. Seems like I ain't had one in 10 years. She hesitated for a moment. She said, well, do you have enough to trade for a Dutch oven? It's hard to make good stew or bake anything in this frying pan. I could fix better meals with an oven and I sure miss the one we lost in the fire. Her question brought immediate guilt to Tobias. He should have thought of this himself without being asked. Emma never complained about anything and never asked for the things that she, he knew she missed. It had been 10 years since she had a new dress and her shoes were the ones that she wore when they left Georgia. And now she was only asking for a cooking tool. Oh, I'm sure I have enough for that. I should have got you one on the last trip. There's a lot of things I should have done for you, Emma, that I ain't, and I know it. Someday I'm gonna make it up to you. Oh, there's nothing I need that can't wait. I've got, I've about got the poles cut to add the new, the cow pen, I've got the poles cut to add to the new cow pen fence in the garden. I'm gonna finish it this afternoon and at sun up tomorrow, I'll head to the trading post. There'll be enough skins for the oven. He went back outside down to the garden and studying the plants that had broken through the rich soil, hoping that the wild hogs would not raid him constantly as they had in the scrub. He also thought of the hardships that his family had endured during those years in the scrub and on the trip here. Zek was eight years old now and had never tasted an apple or eaten a piece of sugar candy. There had been no jackknife to play with, no kite to fly, no whistle to blow. He felt a sudden urgency to do something for both Emma and Zach to, Zach to better their lives somehow. If he did not hurry, the void would become too big for him to ever fill. Just then, Zek came riding by at full gallop, his slim body seeming glued to the saddle. He reined up a bit and made the horse rear on its hind legs and shouted, I bet I could ride him into the swamp, Papa. I bet you I could. Then he raced away to the far side of the clearing. Tobias watched after him, noticing that boy and horse seemed to be one and the same. He thought of that night in the scrub when a man-child picked up a shotgun weighing as much as he and killed a bear without fear or hesitation. And he said, I'll bet you could, Zek. I bet you really could. All right.